So today, for the first time, a large fragment of the carbonate reef is brought to the surface. This one doesn't look like there's, it's stirring up nearly as much. Yeah. And it's an amazing piece. Samples are taken for shipment to laboratories, where they'll be analyzed and scanned, so future space probes will know exactly what to look for. The carbonates in Pavilion Lake may provide other clues as well. Researchers suspect these huge structures were built by microscopic organisms related to some of the most primitive life forms on Earth, exactly the kind of bacteria that might have colonized ancient Martian lakes. Fossilized bacteria are tough to identify, but the Pavilion Lake carbonates reveal the tiny telltale signature they leave behind. If astronauts discover matching microscopic structures in Martian carbonates, they'll know bacteria once lived there. And even more astonishing, that those Martian carbonates were built by the same microorganisms as those found on Earth. It could mean that Mars and Earth are distant cousins, evolved from the same spark of life. We would simply be members of the same family, just spread on two planets. Billions of years ago, Mars might even have looked like Earth. But now, it's just a poisonous wasteland. Could any Martian life have survived that radical change? The answer might be buried in the driest desert on Earth. The surface of Mars is blasted by life-destroying radiation. The atmosphere is lethal and frigid, as cold as the lowest temperature ever recorded on Earth. How could any life survive in this barren soil? When the Viking probes went to Mars in 1976, they found no evidence of life. Were they right, or did they miss something? The answer might be buried in the Atacama Desert of Chile in South America. This is the only place on Earth that the Viking lander could have landed, scooped up some soil, and not detected evidence of life. NASA researchers like Chris McKay know there are traces of life here, but those elusive bacteria are as tough to find here as on Mars. The way I like to describe it, we have a little patch of Mars here on Earth. About two-thirds the size of Italy, the Atacama is the oldest, driest desert on our planet. Hardly any rain has fallen here for the last 10 million years. The Atacama Desert is 50 times drier than Death Valley. Mars is more than 50 times drier than the Atacama. But in the past, Mars was maybe wetter than the Atacama even. Most scientists now believe there were bodies of water on Mars billions of years ago, maybe giving life an opportunity to take hold. Just as it does now around the few oases that defy the Atacama. But the further we travel away from these oases, the more the desert takes back. So it's a kind of living portrait of what happened on Mars as the water disappeared. This offers clues about how life might have adapted as the red planet became a desert. So we have little islands of life that are surviving. And one of our goals is to try to see how those islands are shaped and also see if we can recognize it from space. And we'll use that knowledge to map out Mars and search for life on Mars. As a guide, researchers map out life in the Atacama by checking the organic content of thousands of soil samples. So we will collect samples that are meters apart, then we'll collect samples that are hundreds of meters apart, kilometers, hundreds of kilometers. We'll try to see soils that have life, soils that don't have life. Soils rich in life are easier to find at night. That's because some bacteria and organic material 
turn fluorescent in ultraviolet light. Let's turn off, let's turn off the lights. Wow, look at all these colors. This is wow. really beautiful. Look at that brilliant orange. That we might imagine this being used on Mars. The rover going out at night, turning on its UV headlights and searching for fluorescent minerals and maybe even organic material in the Martian rocks. Okay, well, it looks like this. On Earth, we find little oases of death in a planet that's alive. On Mars, we'd be searching for little oases of life on a planet that's dead. The boundary between alive and dead is the same. The instruments astronauts will need to locate pockets of life on Mars can be tested in the Atacama. That's where this place comes in. The Yungai Research Station doesn't quite look like a science lab. But inside is state-of-the-art equipment for detecting life. Scientists hope these probes will soon be flown to Mars. But first, they will be given a test run of the seemingly lifeless soil of the Atacama. The dirt samples go into what looks like an espresso machine, except this one operates at huge pressure, flushing out the tiniest trace of organic material. Those biological molecules you're looking for won't be released from the rocks unless you do those extreme things with water. Canadian chemist Alison Skelly then puts the droplets into a probe which can identify the chemical building blocks of life. So we're targeting the amino acids, hoping that if there was life on Mars, even though it's dead, they'll be able to see that amino acid signature. The probe, a thousand times more sensitive than Viking, manages the impossible. It finds life where none was detectable before. If a Martian soil sample produces a spike like this, it could be the first sign the astronauts have discovered life. The data will probably show this organic material to be millions of years old. But there's a slim chance the astronauts might have found the ultimate prize. Live bacteria. It's an idea that comes once again from studying death in the Atacama. In this desert, we find something that we think is also occurring on Mars, which is the production by sunlight of chemicals which are constantly attacking the organic material. The bacteria that we find in the soil here have developed mechanisms to repair that damage very efficiently. So on Earth, we have a bug that we think is the superbug, very resistant to dehydration and also resistant to radiation. But it may be that we'll go to Mars and find real superbugs that have learned to survive the dryness and radiation on Mars. This might be very exciting. But those bugs will be well hidden. As the surface of Mars turned to dust, bathed in radiation, bacteria probably migrated underground. My guess is that in any case, when we find life on Mars or evidence of life on Mars, it'll be underground. Moving below ground, there's a zone in the subsurface where there might be water and there might be life. To find living cells, astronauts will have to drill deep under the surface of Mars. They'll also need vehicles to get them to and from the site. Will their technology be up to the challenge? Mars has a surface area as big as all of Earth's continents combined. Astronauts will have no choice but to make long-range and therefore perilous expeditions. On Devon Island, a research 